So um, what that means is if I have n variables, again, this is true for any linear block code, I have n variables and m parity checks, my rate, which is equal to k over n, is actually equal to, uh, I can get k here from n minus m for n minus m over n, which is equal to 1 minus m over n. 1 minus the number of checks divided by the number of variables. Okay, now we're going to specify this, this, uh, this factor graph as follows. This is a regular LBGC code. What that means is that the degree of each um, variable node is the same, is constant, and the degree of each check node is constant. Uh, degree, if you're unfamiliar with graph terminology, the degree is the number of edges that terminate in each vertex. So, um, the degree of each variable node we're going to say is equal to dv. So, for, for instance, let's say dv is equal to 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw half edges. We're just going to let those dangle. Down on the bottom, each check has a constant degree of dc. In this example, let's say it's 6. So again, we're just going to draw half edges and let the let the ends dangle. Like so. Then what we do is we number all the half edges. Generally, it, it should be dvn. So that uh, clearly, since each variable has dv half edges attached to it, the total number of half edges has to be dv times n. Similarly, down here, we're going to number the edges. So on and so on and so on, until we get to, down here we have 6 times m. 6 times m edges on the bottom. Now, uh, one thing to notice here is that the number of edges on the top and the bottom has to be the same. So, 3n has to equal 6m. What that implies is that, or if, what that implies in this example is that m over n has to equal 3 over 6 which is one half. In other words, there's half as many parity checks as variables. What does that mean about the rate? What's the rate of this code? It's one half, right? So m over n is one half, so one minus one half is one half, so the rate of this code is one half. In other words, if I set dv and dc, that gives me the rate of the code. We're going to always assume that um, we're going to always assume that n and m work out like integers, right? so that uh, so that this can excuse me, that this calculation can, can occur as an integer. So what we do then is we take this list of numbers and form the permutation, a random permutation pi over all the all uh, all these these integers from one to three n. do is we connect the 
check J. We connect J to pi of J. So in other words, for instance, here's a, here's a permutation on five letter on six letters. <coughs> so this would be an extremely trivial example. Let me draw it over here. So here's an extremely trivial example. I have two variables and one check. This is actually a useless example because all of the, the vari both variables would be attached to the same check, uh, and that's bad for a reason that I'll talk about in a second. But um, what uh, uh, a permutation over these letters pi could be basically every every number from one to six in a different order. So let's say four, three, five, one, two. Six. So, for instance, we would connect check one to j of one. j of one is four. So that connection is made. Check two. We would connect to j of two, which is three. Check um, three or check edge three. We would connect to pi of three, which is five. Check edge four. We would connect to pi of four, which is one, and so on. So five is connected to two, and six is connected to six, like so. So that's just basically a random. It's a random permutation on these edges, and we connect them in, in that random order. Now there is one thing to be careful of. Um, no variable may be connected. more than once to any check. So what you can do is you can apply this permutation, check to make sure that that, um, that criterion is satisfied. If it's not, uh, what you can do is you can rearrange edges arbitrarily, or you can just throw out the whole permutation, find another one check again. So what this does, if n is sufficiently large, what that does is ensure that most of the cycles are fairly long. So if everything is connected in completely random order, uh, and let's say n is a billion or something, if n is like a billion, um, we start at x1, we'll then be randomly connected. We'll have three connections, but let's say the first connection is connected to something randomly selected between 1 and 500 million down here, then again, that's connected to something randomly selected from 1 to a billion up here, and so on. So we, uh, in order to get back to x1, uh, we have a fairly long path, hopefully. So uh, this should hopefully ensure that most of, the, uh, um, most of the cycles are fairly long. And in fact, what you can show is that as n goes to infinity, uh, with probability 1, all the cycles are infinitely long. But that's uh, uh, that's something you can look up in the literature for for um, uh, for these kinds of codes. Now, um, we have our parity check matrix. Let me just emphasize this point: number of edges up here and the number of edges down here must be the same. So what that implies is that dv times n is equal to dc times m which means m over n is equal to d, uh, dv over dc. So therefore, the rate is equal to 1 minus dv over dc, generally. So for example, um, if dv is 3 and dc is 4, what's my rate? 